Welcome back to Beauty Marks Podcast, a space where we embrace our marks acquired through our journey. My name is Elizabeth Savion, and welcome to another episode of this podcast. Today, I am at Hi Hello Labs in downtown Orlando in this beautiful studio space, and you can always reach out to them for any creative production or audio visual needs. They are amazing, love their team. They even got me a coffee today. Like Chris, shout out, special shout out. He went all out, and I'm just really excited to be here today with a special guest. As you guys know, I am really big into mental health and I share my journey a lot. And I know it's personal and I know sometimes I'm like, am I sharing too much? But it's just to help you guys and to normalize mental health and getting the help that you need in your mental health walk. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to this podcast and leave a review. That all helps to grow this podcast and to get the word out about Beauty Marks podcast because all of this helps to grow and also bring awareness to topics like today. On today's episode, I have Sueli Rivera, which is a licensed mental health counselor here in the Orlando area. And she has been on here before, but this time it's a little different because we are actually here in person. Yes. <laughs> So excited I made to have it. you. Yes. <laughs> so excited to have you here, Sueli Rivera, um, my counselor and someone that has helped me walk my journey. Well, thank you for having me. It's really an honor to be here. It's so different than doing it on Zoom. So I'm super excited to be with you live and in the in the lab. It's a beautiful lab. Yes. If you feel the pressure of the tension of like, okay, there's people in here. <laughs> but we're pretty much bringing you guys into a session today. And I thought this concept would be interesting yeah. because it's something that when you hear about it, you're like, okay, how is it going to flow? How is it going to go? And then when you actually see it, be talked about or walk through then yeah. you're like oh it's not that bad it's not that scary you know yeah even though I know when I first <laughs> went to therapy it was a little scary yeah I think it's normal I think a lot of times too people have like a per like this preconceived notion of what it's going to be like when they go in mm -hmm. especially what they see on tv or in movies mm -hmm. and usually um, you're always trying to find a therapist that's more your fit right yeah. so I try to have that more down to earth bring a little humor when we need yes. it. And so, um, yeah, I always encourage people to make sure the person that they're sitting with is a good fit for them. Definitely. It's like dating. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you have to figure out your flow, got to figure out who's your yes. best match. Um, and I think that that part is something that I've walked with you of understanding my journey. And I feel like when I first came to you also, it was like, okay, here's my person. Like, can I just make a PowerPoint presentation so you know? <laughs> this is what I've gone through. Here you go. Yes. <laughs> what is like, I would say, like the biggest misconception I would say about therapy? Mm, that's a great question. I would say the biggest misconception is that you're going to come in and someone is just going to give you advice and fix it. We're going to fix it all. And this is your journey. So mm. the goal is not to fix or to just tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. The goal is to help you, give you tools and watch you kind of use critical thinking mm -hmm. and those tools. And of course, we have techniques and things that we implement along the way. But we want you to be able to have that autonomy to decide what works for you, right? Mm -hmm. What this journey is going to look like, what your healing or your wholeness is going to look like. Yeah. And it mm -hmm. looks like different for everybody else absolutely and absolutely. what have you seen then with my walk and we'll already start getting personal yes, <laughs> with, let's do it with a live therapy session <laughs> starting now let's deep breath <laughs> There we go. <laughs> We're gonna go. We're gonna do this. So the last time we had, I had you on, it was to talk about my story. Yes. And so I have shared on here um, that I was sexually abused as a child, and just like overcoming that, as well as like my walk through healing, mm -hmm. codependency, narcissistic abusive relationships and things that I've walked through. So that's already out there. So like you can go back to <laughs> all the episodes and listen to that. Um, but today's episode is kind of like of, t of things that I have walked through with you and I'm still walking through of um, the topic of feeling safe within our body once you've experienced trauma, um, you know, the negative beliefs that we have about ourselves and just like how we see ourselves and how we show up in relationships right. in friendships and everything. Yes what I want to do is being that those who've been following you got to hear your story. I kind of wanted us to walk through what it's been like post sharing your story and then kind of talk about what it's done, uh, how the traumas kind of showed up and maybe how it's looked a little different this time around than maybe previous times when you've done counseling with the amazing Maria. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about what it's been like for you since you shared your story. 
It has been a roller coaster. <laughs> I shared an episode about like how I'm really feeling because mm-hmm. sharing your story is so scary because first you have finally found your voice about the topic and you finally have validated yourself and someone else has validated what you experienced and then you're putting it out there for other people to first judge to say maybe that that's not the truth they have other perceptions of their story um and it can be you know there's a lot of things that come up when you mm-hmm. share your story that it can start drama or issues within the within the family so i feel like i wasn't as prepared for it you know i was kind of yeah. like i knew I, I need to do it and i know i need to talk about it but it definitely brought different emotions. And mm-hmm. so I felt like sadness. I felt a little grief. I felt a little anxiety about it. Yeah. Um, and just kind of not reliving it because I think that I have healed from it, but I think it opened up other conversations to have. Exactly. And that's kind of what I wanted to kind of gear it towards today, right? So let's talk about you've been experiencing a little bit of the dating world, mm-hmm. right? How have you noticed your trauma come up in your dating? I am very, still very private about it, Mm -hmm. but I think that it has shown up in so many different ways as the fear of getting hurt, you know, and the fear of opening myself up again to the possibility of dating because I say it and let's just be real. So in in February, (laughs) when I first started dating, Sueli really is the one that was like, all right, we're going to do this. And when she said do it, I went like, you like, (laughs) you did that whole like deep dive in, in the deep end of the pool. Yeah. I thought you were going to like tiptoe, kind of like, you know, (laughs) dip your toes in. (laughs) What did I do, Sueli? What you did (laughs) was very interesting. You... Went on multiple dates with multiple different people Mm -hmm. all at once. Yeah. And not that it was, not that I'm going to say it was a a bad thing to do. It was just interesting to see you just fully dive in. I just like ripped off the Yeah, you ripped it so, I mean, I was like, wow, she took the hair and everything with that. (laughs) Like, you know? And so I was proud of you because you were were doing something to get uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But of course, we knew that with that, there was going to be some experiences that you had with it. Right. And so considering some of the things that you've experienced. Yeah. Right. Considering some of the the, you know, the past relationship you've had Mm -hmm. and including your trauma. I want you to really talk about what you've noticed with your body as you've experienced dating. Mm -hmm. So checking in with myself. Yeah. I have felt different things. I have felt comfortable. I've had moments of feeling very comfortable and confident Mm -hmm. in my walk of like, I got this. Like I'm kind of in control. Like I kind of know what I'm doing, you Mm -hmm. know, like that kind of feeling. And then I've had the other side of a lot of anxiety or I get like the ick real quick. (laughs) There's the word, the ick. (laughs) The ick. Or I get like, like, no, it's too close. Like the vulnerability part of me, which um, I was kind of surprised about because I have always um have heard in relationships that I've been in it's like oh like you're too needy like you um you like need too much you demand too much I felt like I was so in it Mm -hmm. to the point that I would lose myself in relationships and now dating I feel like I do have a guard up and I feel like it's like oh over there like you can come over there you know and I told you one time that I was like who am I Like, who have I become? (laughs) Like, I feel like I'm such a different person in the dating space. And I feel like that's where I realize I'm fearful avoidant. Mm -hmm. And coming from someone that was codependent and was anxiously attached. And so I would that would mean being very, very insecure in relationships um, would always be like I didn't have fulfillment in myself. So I was always looking for that uh, validation and things like that. Um, Then it just showed up like. Swelly, I need help. Like, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. (laughs) Well, let's talk about the ick. Yeah. Let's go back to that, right? Mm -hmm. Because when you experience it, kind of visualize for a moment one of those dates that the ick happened. Mm -hmm. Where did you notice it in your body? I started feeling, like, anxious. Mm. I think it was anxious. Like, I was just feeling like, oh, like, I either want to get out of here or I've seen this before. Something like that. I feel like that's what. So the words right there, it's, 
I've seen this before. Mm-hmm. Usually that's kind of like this trauma response, right? Mm-hmm. So our our system, our mm-hmm. nervous system is kind of forewarning us like, hey, something something's off here. This mm-hmm. doesn't feel good to me. And so your body going into that, my chest, that anxiousness was kind of doing that trauma response or mm-hmm. forewarning of the trauma response mm-hmm. that there's some trauma that's stored in the body and yeah. that's how it's letting us know that it's still there. Mm. And so your anxiety was kind of just saying, hey, my trauma Mm -hmm. in its own way to you. Mm. And so how would I like, is that going to happen with every person that I come across? That's a great question. So what normally happens is. Being that you're you're entering the dating pool, Mm -hmm. hopefully soon again. Right. (laughs) And so. (laughs) um. As you're in the dating pool, you're going to notice it, right? Mm -hmm. One, you got to listen and trust your intuition, right? So your gut Mm -hmm. is also going to be telling you like, "Mm, this doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. So sometimes if it's, let's say in your gut, you're feeling this, trust your judgment, right? Mm -hmm. You've done the work. Mm -hmm. So you've done the the, the trauma work. You've, you've, you've really invested in yourself. Mm -hmm. So trust your judgment. But number two, um, if you're noticing the ick, like, like you need to ask yourself, what just happened Mm -hmm. or what caused that? Like you can go back after the date and ask yourself like, what triggered that response Mm -hmm. that I felt that it come up? Was it that he utilized a phrase that someone used in your past, Mm -hmm. right? Or someone in your past that's made you feel unsafe or um, made you feel unheard or invalidated in some way. So explore that, take some time and explore why the ick happened? Mm-hmm. What was the event around the ick? Mm-hmm. And then what were your thoughts after the ick? Mm. Did you automatically want to shut down? Mm-hmm. I feel like it's that. What did you? <laughs> she's like, I wanted to I'm shut like, down. I want to be like, um, how do I exit <laughs> this in a kind way? <laughs> well, a fearful avoidant, that's very, yeah. that's normal, right? Mm-hmm. So they're notoriously called the hot cold, right? Yeah. So they're like, yeah, I want to do this. Oh, no, wait. Yeah. Right? And so that's exactly what happens with the ick. The ick mm-hmm. is like, Whew. so we want you to challenge yourself to really ask yourself, mm-hmm. what is that? Yeah. What am I really feeling? Is it taking me somewhere? And maybe that somewhere it's taking you is something that's not still fully resolved yeah. that we have to kind of explore and process. Yeah. I think it's been like a mix of a few things because – there's that part that it's like it's scary to get back out there. And I was always in the hot and cold relationship. So then I would get frustrated with myself because I'm like, OK, like these are genuine, right, of what I know. They're genuine guys that I'm like putting myself out there and giving a chance. But then it's like certain things. I'm like, ooh, like the other people, <laughs> right? Like, for example, I remember this person would text me all the time. I wasn't used to that because I was in a very hot and cold relationship where I feel like if anything, I was trying to chase for them to talk to me. Mm-hmm. So when this person showed communication skills and <laughs> attentiveness mm-hmm. and like what I have asked and was begging the wrong person for, mm-hmm. that gave me like, oh, like, why are you reaching out every day? Like, stop. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, my God, I'm the problem. <laughs> But see, that was good, right? And that sounds crazy. Sometimes people go, wait, that's good? Mm -hmm. Yes, because you can realize, wait a minute, I had been kind of conditioned to believe Mm -hmm. that I had to do this, that I had to pursue all Mm -hmm. the time. And it's showing you that, no, wait a minute, in healthy communication, I don't have to just be the one kind of chasing, right? That I'm able to have someone who's going to check in and be like, hey, babe, how's your day? Yeah. You know? how's your day going right and so that's important for you to realize and so part of getting rid of that particular ick Mm -hmm. is you're going to be like okay so i'm not used to this Mm -hmm. but i'm going to i'm going to engage it a little bit more yeah right so it's not that you're going to go to the other the the deep end of Mm -hmm. it and just be like texting all the time Mm -hmm. right because it's going to take a little bit for you but i want you to 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 allow yourself to engage that or initiate it. Mm, yeah. You hear that? that? I'm like, <laughs> no. <laughs> She's like, I don't want to do that. So but that's, like, <laughs> I know it's fear of rejection and yes. it's fear of getting hurt. So it's like, if I pursue, will I be back in the same place that I was before? Because right. I've never, like, I felt like I never allowed for them to pursue because mm-hmm. I would always be there. And so right. now I feel like I'm trying to, like, do differently. Like, my, and someone that has been through that, you know that it's like, when you're like giving and you like want to help like you see the need you're like oh my god like so they tell you that they have a bad day my natural what i really want to do is like oh my god like 
what can I do? How can I help you? That's yeah. like who I really am. But it's knowing to yeah. do that with the right people when you have security and safety in a Absolutely. relationship versus just someone that you just met that yeah. you're like, I don't owe you anything. <laughs> so if someone says to you, man, I had a bad day today, mm -hmm. you're just getting to know them. Mm -hmm. What's a different response that still taps into who you genuinely are, mm -hmm. but doesn't necessarily mean you're giving them full access or you're, you're becoming the caregiver, mm -hmm. right? Because we have to be careful with that. I would say like, <laughs> um, I'm sorry, like what happened? Like, do you want to talk about it? Yeah. Tell me about your day. Yeah. Or do you want to talk about yeah. it? Simple things like that where you're still being who you are, right? Because yeah. you have a big heart. Anyone who knows you knows you have a heart for people. You care. Mm -hmm. And so we don't want you to lose your identity mm -hmm. and be afraid to tap into that because of what's happened in the past. Mm -hmm. So, But you find a healthier way to do it. Yeah. Well, do you want to talk about it? Well, tell me what happened. Mm -hmm. And then you're just a listening ear. Yeah. And you can validate. Mm -hmm. You can paraphrase what you hear back. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, that sounds really difficult, mm -hmm. you know, what you went through at work today. Mm -hmm. And that gives you the space to feel like, wow, mm -hmm. I engaged in this, but in a healthy way. Yeah. I didn't have to fix it. I didn't have to solve yeah. it. Or how can I help, right? That's, that's a solution focused. Yeah. Now you just get to sit and just empathize. Mm -hmm. Just be a listener. Yeah. And that it, that sometimes is really what people really need. That's like the key word. It's like the solution or savior. Yeah. I never want to be like that again in someone's life. Like I we all have issues and things to work on, but I don't want to go in to rescue people, which yeah. I feel like that was something from childhood that I would do. So it was like I was known as like the peacekeeper, the one that would help, the one that would show up. And so now trying to navigate healthy relationships when you've mm -hmm. never experienced one. Yeah. It's like, you're like, okay, is this too much? Is this too little? And so that's what I work with <laughs> with you yeah. of like, why do I feel this like frustration inside of me, you know, of like the battle of who I am. And I like how you say that, but it's not, it's, it's tapping into a healthier version yeah. of still keeping your sense of self and like your, um, yeah. I guess coping mechanisms. Yeah. So you were conditioned or there was this learned behavior, right? That you mm -hmm. kind of picked up on like if you saw someone arguing or you mm -hmm. saw a situation, there's somewhere along the way, mm -hmm. you were like, okay, let me do this. Mm -hmm. And that'll help bring things down, right? You said peacemaker, yeah. right? And so you're in relationships, you were tapping into that, especially mm -hmm. in, the, in that long-term one. Mm -hmm. And so what we want you to do is you don't have to be the peacemaker, mm -hmm. but you can still try to bring peace into a situation for someone mm -hmm. just by listening, yeah. right? So there, it's just shifting into something that is a little bit healthier where you're still feeling like you're showing up for the person mm -hmm. and still showing up as who you are because yeah. there is a side of you that genuinely cares yeah. about other people. So mm -hmm. we don't want you to lose sight of that. Mm -hmm. And the fearful avoidant, the avoidant is going to try to say no. Yeah. You're not showing up for anyone. They need to show up for you. Yeah. Right. And so we want to find balance to it. Mm -hmm. In the long run, slowly see that the ick calms down with safe people. Yeah. Again, you're dipping your toes in mm -hmm. with the, the, the person. So let's yeah. say we have a, you can, name, we have an imaginary guy we're mm -hmm. using today. We'll use Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> that name's safe, right? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know a Johnny. <laughs> okay, good. So we're going to use Johnny. So here you go on a couple dates with Johnny. You guys mm -hmm. are talking on a regular mm -hmm. basis. When he says, I'm having a bad day, mm -hmm. or man, I just had a really icky situation, your natural response is, mm -hmm. is to what? Naturally mm -hmm. is to help or like come up with a solution. Okay. So... Instead of coming up with the solution, mm -hmm. it's Johnny's situation, mm -hmm. you're going to remind yourself and say, no. hey, Johnny, I'm, I, tell me about the day. Mm -hmm. You know, it sounds difficult. What are you thinking about doing? Mm -hmm. Right? Put it back on Johnny because mm -hmm. it's not yours. Yeah. Right? We're not called to be saviors. Yeah. We have one savior. Yeah. <laughs> and so we want to make sure that we're being careful that we're not starting a new thing. Yeah. Implementing old behaviors mm. right because you've done the work yeah right but i always tell people it's like that phrase when people are like oh i'm celibate mm -hmm. right well it's easy to be celibate when there's no one around yeah right it's different now when you're actually mm -hmm. dating someone that yeah. you're attracted to 
Yeah. Right. And so now you're you're going to be practicing what you've been preaching. Mm. So now that you're talking about celibacy, um, let's talk about body boundaries and like feeling safe within our body. And I've shared with you that for a long time, I haven't felt safe with other men, but also within my own body uh, kind of feeling because of things that have happened through my past, um, through sexual trauma, but also. Um, an exercise that you had me do, which is EMDR. And that was like buzzers that you put on your hands. And can you walk me yeah, through so, kind of so we talk about it? So what we do with EMDR is is we have this belief, right? Mm-hmm. So there's this negative belief we're going off of. So a common one, I'm not saying this one is yours, but yeah. we're going to use, use this one. I'm not good enough, right? Yeah. And so what happens is we have this belief mm-hmm. and it began somewhere. Yeah. And so there's this memory network that's associated to mm-hmm. this belief. So what EMDR does is it's um, activating the left and the right brain, right? Mm-hmm. So everything that's stored in the body is going to start coming up. Mm-hmm. So that's memories, that's mm-hmm. emotions, those, those mm-hmm. are sensations. Um, sometimes clients will say that they feel um, even uh, like uh, sick to their stomach or mm-hmm. things like that. So everything that's stored in the body is coming up with EMDR. Yeah. And so with EMDR, you've been able to experience some of that where mm-hmm. I don't feel safe. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit about what that looks like in your present now mm-hmm. with dating. I feel like I am guarded with definitely physical touch. I'm not a physical touch person at all. And every guy on their dating app says that that is their love language. <laughs> so like, well, you're not going to do that with me. Send them my way and I'll have them take the quiz. Yeah, right. So I just the- am like, what is this? But <laughs> you guys know that if you've seen the dating apps, that is the very common thing. And like, of course, there's a part where maybe it's just me that I have. I'm like new to the game. That's how it feels like. Like I'm very new um, that it's like people, they meet you right away. And it's like that's kind of the expectation of like any physical interaction. And everyone's different. Everybody's boundaries are different and everybody's views on that are very different but I think for me how I haven't felt safe in relationships and then coming and dating I've had to like really talk kind of talk myself through of being like I am in control like of my body and no one's gonna do anything that I don't consent that's right. You know, and so being vocal about it and saying like when a guy is like getting really touchy or like I it's like I just met you. Like <laughs> I just met you. But I know some girls feel comfortable like that and yeah. they're okay with that. So it's like communicating the boundary that has been something that I've had to practice to be like, "Hey, like I just met you. I just don't feel comfortable with any like physical contact or um, you know, like kind yeah. of setting that expectation and or like, hey, I'm really big on respect, which that means, you know, with my boundary, which I feel like them people know, you know. Yeah. Um, and I have, of course, there's been very respectful guys, but there's also been other ones that are not. And so I, ha- having to speak up and say, like, I don't feel comfortable with this. Yeah. And being OK with however they react. That has been the hardest part, because um, not only the part of like people pleasing, <laughs> But then it's like, oh, my God, am I, like, a weirdo? Or, like, I'm, am I, like, crazy for being this way, you know? But it's, like, they don't know my history. They don't need to yeah. know my history right now. Like, I'm just getting to know them. Exactly. So it's, like, feeling comfortable um, because I know I, like, feel hypervigilant mm-hmm. or I feel, like, very tense. So it's, like, trying to, like, talk myself through, like, it's okay. Like, I'm going to be fine. Like, not putting myself in certain situations where I feel unsafe mm-hmm. because through that activity – um, that we did, there was multiple mem- memories that came up. The memories that came up during EMDR were kind of shocking to me because I don't think that I had ever been like gotten to the root of why I feel so unsafe. Like why? Like, okay, yes, I know I've gone through the childhood trauma, but why do I feel so unsafe? And then we went through like all the memories. Yeah. And um I know that like from sixth grade, like fifth or sixth grade, I've been very sexualized, like because of my body type, because certain people in school would touch me without like, you know, like would slap my butt, like very like in a joking, right, for them, joking Mm -hmm. way. But I started feeling like so insecure and so uncomfortable with my body. Like I was trying to hide my body. I was trying to be like, ooh, like don't look at me, like just Mm -hmm. leave me alone. And um then in middle school some other situations that happened and then in high school and then even in college and even in my relationship that I one time went to this event 
And literally I was with my partner at the time mm -hmm. and I had just stepped away for like a little bit. And um, I, in the, in the 45 minutes that I was in this place, I was like touched or grabbed by five different guys. Mm. And I just felt like, what the heck? Like, it's like people feel the permission to like touch me and like they have access to me when they don't even know me. Like they were strangers. And I felt like that made me kind of relive that trauma of like, I don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. Like I don't feel safe in my body. I don't feel comfortable in my body. What are you feeling right now even as you're talking about it? I feel tense. Yeah. <laughs> Do you notice that your body changed as you were talking? Yeah. Yeah. And so that's very common, right? Mm -hmm. So what's happening is even now, as you're, re as you're telling that memory, mm -hmm. your body remembers exactly how you felt. Yeah. Right? And so you're right now, I watched even your <laughs> eyes change and I was like, there like, it is. Yeah. There she, there it is. And that's okay. And mm -hmm. it's great that, that whoever's watching this, right, yeah. is getting to see how that happens because mm -hmm. It's not okay. Yeah. Right? It's not okay that people have thought that they can touch you inappropriately yeah. or touch you or 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 invade your space. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's just as simple as like, can you give me a little space? Yeah. Right? You know, this mm -hmm. is my space. And so what you just experienced right there, right? That's where, okay, your response is going up. Mm -hmm. So your window of tolerance is right here, right? Mm -hmm. So we have this window. Okay, this is where I can do things in a rational sense. Yeah. This is where I can feel things, mm -hmm. right? And process things, right? But all of a sudden, what's happening is, okay, wait a minute, I'm going out of that window mm -hmm. and I'm getting into its hyperarousal. So that's when you notice your body changing, mm -hmm. right? You can go to hyper or hypo. Yeah. And so hyper, the racing thoughts, mm -hmm. the anxiousness, the tension, mm -hmm. All of those things will begin to happen. And there is where people will sometimes become reactive. Yeah. Um, and so sometimes you'll see you're like, ah, mm -hmm. right? The impulsivity might to, mm -hmm. to react will happen. Mm -hmm. And so those are normal responses because the trauma is still in your body. Yeah. Right? And so part of gaining it back, right? Making yourself feel safe is continuing. The part of the journey is continuing the boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. So if someone breaches the boundary, if and then, right? This is yeah. what we, we talk about. If and then. If you touch it, touch me again after I've already asked you, then I'm going to leave. Mm -hmm. And if they do it, you leave, yeah. right? And you do that because you're making it clear of what your stance is, mm. right? And they'll be like, whoa, people need to understand that there are boundaries. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, mm -hmm. and it's not okay to breach that just because they're comfortable uh, and, and the whole concept of, um, many people believing that their love language is physical touch. <laughs> so for me, that goes deeper, yeah. right? So that's an attachment wound, yeah. right? So there's some, some, there's probably some mommy or daddy issues in there somewhere yeah. because not everyone's love language is physical touch, mm -hmm. right? And so I think it's important that people also understand just because it's your love language doesn't mean it's someone else's, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so when you voice your boundaries, mm -hmm. You're letting them know, like, hey, this isn't my this isn't my language. Yeah. And so when you do that, it'll it, it becomes more natural mm -hmm. and you won't be as reactive because you're 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 being consistent with it. Yeah. Right. Part of the issue is we're inconsistent sometimes with things. Mm -hmm. And so we don't enforce the boundaries that we say we want. Mm -hmm. Or we don't do what we say we're going to yeah. do. Right. So if I tell you I'm gonna walk away. But then you do it again and I just say, oh, stop. I'm not doing what I said, mm -hmm. right? So I have to be consistent with what mm -hmm. I say. And that is I'm walking away. Yeah. Or if someone is yelling at me, I'm, I'm hanging up the phone, mm -hmm. right? I'm not, I told you that if you yelled at me that I was going to hang up the phone. Mm -hmm. I'm hanging up the phone, yeah. right? And so th those are, you know, what you're experiencing, um, that trauma response. Mm -hmm. It takes time. Mm -hmm. Right. Because like you said, you're new to getting back into the dating. Yeah. And so you're also seeing that with EMDR, there was these unresolved things that were still kind of there. Mm -hmm. Safety wasn't necessarily what brought you back into therapy. No. But yet EMDR brought it up for us. Yeah. Because I think that's a great example of like you being consistent with your boundaries, because I feel like also because I never had the language or the tools, I was shut down in situations. So when I was touched or I was 
um, put in those uncomfortable situations or I would say no and then it would just be like a laugh or like haha like no like the consent part it's like oh well she's like not serious about it but it's like inside and how my body is like I don't feel comfortable and I want you to stop Mm -hmm. but I didn't know how to like say it you know and I didn't have like the internal voice that I do now (laughs) so now I feel like in dating there has been people that like they take it very well and they're like of course like I'm very respectful or like Mm -hmm. actually like until you're ready then you tell me you know like of like uh, feeling comfortable uh, even in proximity which some people are a little (laughs) extreme a little extra but you know I'm okay with that I rather have an extreme than someone that's like you know like all of my business yeah so I definitely feel like that has um, been a journey of feeling comfortable within my body and also around guys, you know? And so um, how you're saying that is is stored in our body, what are also other beliefs that maybe I might have, you know, that show up in that space? The first question that will come to mind is, tell me how you see yourself, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So... If you feel comfortable answering, you can, but Mm -hmm. if you don't, don't. uh, But that question allows me to see how do you see yourself Mm -hmm. and your body, right? Mm -hmm. So we have the safety factor, but then how do I see myself, Mm -hmm. right? So is there any self-confidence or body stuff because of body image, um, because of the things that have happened to me? Yeah. Sometimes um, some women and men, I don't want to say it's just, um, just women, Um, will utilize weight or clothing to mask or hide themselves because of what's happening. So um, you experience a trauma, Mm -hmm. and so sometimes a person will begin to cover themselves up so no one can touch their body again, Mm -hmm. so no one can see them. So now they have the shame associated to their Mm -hmm. body. Mm -hmm. right or sometimes people will go to eating or hyper Mm -hmm. uh, you know there's various ways so Mm -hmm. they'll put on weight so now i'm not attractive Mm -hmm. but then how do i see myself with Mm -hmm. this weight that i'm carrying now Mm -hmm. right so those are that's another thing that that's really common when it comes to traumas is what were the coping skills that we utilized that weren't healthy Mm -hmm. but it's what got us through yeah in those times yeah. And like we can revert to that through like my disordered eating that I experienced. I feel like that's like initially where like when I'm feeling a certain way about myself or insecure, I'm like, oh, my God, I have to, I can't eat tomorrow or like I have to lose weight. And then when I was really skinny, I would be like, oh, my God, the anxiety of like what size or, you know, all of that. So it's like the goal in therapy has been a lot of me feeling OK with how I am, because mm-hmm. no matter what the outside looks like, it's like it's the internal struggles that show up. Mm-hmm. And that's how I also show up in relationships and my friendships in the world. Yeah. Even this podcast, like if I really have those moments because I have them right of mm-hmm. insecurities about myself or I'm like, oh, my God, my face on, on my period. I feel floated, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, like those kind of things that you just go through and you're like, I feel gross right (laughs) this is the worst we cover like then I start I can have those moments but before I would revert to unhealthy patterns right and through therapy I feel like I've learned better tools and better ways to deal or even speaking out loud the opposite of what I'm telling myself I'm like no that's not true That's that's not true in the dating space it has been um there was this guy that was like very attractive very built he was he was like a gym guy right like a typical Mm -hmm. gym guy and I remember telling you like it was kind of surprising right because I felt like I had like before I felt like I had to explain like oh I do work out I do this and I'm like I hate that because like why can't I just show up in a place and I feel like I can just be me I don't have to like tell you like this is, you know, what fit looks like. This is, you know, the yeah. the um, the healthy. Like these are my charts, <laughs> like health. But I have struggled with that in my life through my hormones that people don't know. Like, right. so it's like you can be like from the outside you see something, but it's like you don't know like what my struggle really is. And being like that person's not looking at you for that. Like that person's not into you because of just your outside like yeah. he sees something else yeah that's your insecurity yes. right there right that's what's showing up at that moment mm-hmm. he's just like oh here's 
here's Elizabeth. I'm going on this date with Elizabeth, yeah. right? And so, but you're, that's you. You're mm-hmm. like, oh, my insecurity, like mm-hmm. oh, my, my weight. And we, and it's true. And, and a lot of times, um, and we see this so much, especially with women, not that we're excluding men, but we really do, right? Society, there's so many aspects to that yeah. there's so many layers right mm-hmm. it's like the lasagna so there's like society there's cultural there's mm-hmm. family all these aspects that feed into this narrative mm-hmm. about our image and so then when you have trauma in there too mm-hmm. in this lasagna right so now all of a sudden this is like the perfect recipe for you to start having insecurity mm-hmm. and negative self-talk yeah. and body image stuff mm-hmm. because we're allowing all these other voices to mm-hmm. dictate what we see yeah and versus looking at ourselves and being like i am dot 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 i am beautiful i am fearfully and wonderfully made i am Mm -hmm. beloved and so we don't we don't necessarily lean to that because what we're hearing the criticisms that we hear or the critical it's like you you know have you ever walked into a room um culturally like our our spanish families um, come on we got to get it together but we're like Mm -hmm. what yeah. Oh, like you've lost weight it's and you're always like, the first thing and you're like um excuse me hi yeah <laughs> i'm good thanks <laughs> you know and yeah. so those are things that we have to be intentional to teach mm-hmm. present generations and younger generations not to continue this pattern yeah right and so you now go okay wait i know that he's not looking at this mm-hmm. he just wants to get to know who i am yeah and so it takes time. It, it really takes time for us to break some of those um, cultural norms that we've also put on us as well. Yeah, that is something that I'm still working through. <laughs> and I have a lot of moments that I'm like, OK, Liz, like like even this past week, I know that I was looking at old pictures and I just told you that like I mm-hmm. hate throwback pictures. Like I hate <laughs> like that because I feel like also very detached from like that person because mm-hmm. of also healing stuff and like through my trauma. And um, I had like this thought that I was like, I was like, oh, my God, like I look like so full of life at this weight or at this like I look so like good, you know, Mm -hmm. like I'm like, what if I was like that now? Like, would my dating show up differently? Mm -hmm. You know, and I feel like really sad about that because I'm like, I I know that that's not true, you know, Mm -hmm. but at the same time, I feel like those are the that's like my trauma response of like the lies that you tell yourself that it's like it's not about that you know and so it's like a constant thing like reminding yourself like you are in such a better place now and like you don't need to change yourself to be loved or to be accepted you know like because people don't show up for how you look on the outside you know but that has been a narrative since since I started this podcast I have like been open of how that has hindered so many things that I didn't even want to go to places or see people or like I was like, oh, my God, like, they're going to say that. Oh, my God, she's gained so much weight when they don't know, like, what has happened in the past two years in my life, you know? And so I don't know. Like, I don't know how to navigate that sometimes. And I'm just being, like, so vulnerable. (laughs) I I know. And every part of me wants to be like, let's let's, let's take a moment. Right? (laughs) And I pause. Yeah, pause for a second. Let's give you a moment. But Mm -hmm. I, I, I hear you. I yeah. completely understand what you're saying, right? So that sadness is speaking up right now. Mm-hmm. Well, let's let's look at it for a moment. Mm-hmm. If I was to, you know, we've done this exercise before. Mm-hmm. What are you sad about? And focus it right there. I think I'm sad that I have to, like, heal through a lot of stuff still um, of what someone else caused. So you're sad about having to still heal. That I beat myself up. <laughs> So you're sad that you beat yourself up. Yeah, sometimes. Oh, my period, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I decided to do that. <laughs> I wish I would have timed the, the calendar. Like, all right, I'm going to be super vulnerable this week. <laughs> and see, there's a great coping mechanism that we yes, all my utilize. Humor. humor. Yes. And that's okay. Yeah. There's space for that. There is. There's this is me that. in my sessions really Literally. i do laugh because i laugh through my trauma <laughs> we laugh together and we're right? like in the quiet and i'm just like you know <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay yeah. right mm-hmm. and i think that's it's beautiful for people to also see that yeah right um sometimes we go into sessions where people will go in with this mindset of like i have to fix it it has to look like this right and sometimes yeah. we need a moment like this where you laugh mm-hmm. and you cry or you cry and you laugh and that's okay because that's part of your journey. 
Yeah. Right? So what you just did there was okay. Right? Thank you for sharing your sadness. I appreciate that. Listen, one of the biggest things is in this process that you're in right now Mm -hmm. is allowing yourself to explore these emotions that come up. Mm -hmm. Right? Because you're in a different, you're in an uncharted territory for you. Mm -hmm. Right? So you've experienced life a certain way when it came to relationships, especially your long-term one. Mm -hmm. And now you're experiencing life in a different way. Mm -hmm. And so this is it's normal that it's going to bring up emotions Mm -hmm. sit with them oftentimes we want to run away Mm -hmm. right what are things you do sometimes to avoid your feelings um i watch netflix or i go (laughs) well i go to the movies or um i call someone or i yeah it's like i distract myself get on social media yeah yeah, I go oh, on like those are whole, huge ones, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Netflix is mm-hmm. huge. Escapism, yeah. right? We, I don't want to feel this. Mm-hmm. All right, or I'll do something to get busy. Yeah, some people like to clean, mm-hmm. right? Oh yeah, that's another one too. Yeah, <laughs> it's very but, common. Yeah. So mm-hmm. like to clean or to do or to organize, right? So it's because I I don't want to give space for the feelings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. allow yourself moments now obviously there's a time and place for it right mm-hmm. so if you're in the middle of like an important event that's probably not the place where we're going to explore our sadness right <laughs> yeah <laughs> but if you're at home or if you're mm-hmm. taking a walk you have a moment to sit with that mm-hmm. you know find a spot and be like okay what is going on here mm-hmm. what am i feeling what are the things coming up mm-hmm. is there a memory associated to this yeah you know Um, And allow yourself to feel because we've come into this place where we know toxic positivity is there, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's like, oh, I'm great. You know, like if I say grateful, yes, let me just be grateful for the moon and the sun. And that's great. Okay. I'm not. (laughs) Thank you, Lord, for all the things you've done for us. Yes. But yeah. what I, I want people to hear, if, if if they take anything away, is give space even to those emotions that are difficult, right? Mm-hmm. Often time they're referred to as like the negative emotions, right? Yeah. Give space for that because that is where the healing, that's where the mm-hmm. you've got to walk through it. Oftentimes we just kind of sweep it under the rug. Mm-hmm. Guess what? It's going to come back up somewhere. Yeah. And so that sadness right now, you got to get, you had to give it space. Mm-hmm. And normally we probably give it even more space, but we're limited in time <laughs> and we have people watching us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're technically in a very raw moment in yes. front of other people. Yes. <laughs> but yeah. it is vulnerability. And I feel yeah. like through vulnerability, there's so much healing, though, you yeah. know, and there's so much that can come out of that because um, it's scary to do, you know, yeah. but even in your in my sessions with you, I feel like it's like a no judgment zone. Like yeah. I can just share and say and be like, I had this thought this week or I had this other thought. Um, and you have given me like a lot of the tools for that, you know, of like the language and, you know, like the the right thing to <laughs> of how to cope with mm-hmm. it. Um, but I have but a lot of things have come up with that topic, you know, which I know we've talked I have talked about, like not feeling good enough, changing myself to be loved. And um, because of trauma that I've experienced, like how I can heal and continue to heal, because I feel like I am very much like that. And even with you that I'm like, I wonder if I'm good now. I've been in therapy. I'm good. I'm good. But then now until relationships, that's when other things come up. Yeah. And even when you were saying about coping, I feel like for a while when you're busy, Mm -hmm. you don't feel it. But then like at night, then like you start getting these thoughts or like when you have no distraction, then you're it's kind of like your body's like, oh, got to find something like we haven't dealt with this before, like all these emotions. Um, So like, what do I do then when I have those scatterbrains or those like moments that I'm like, ah. So that's very common, Mm -hmm. right? Because we, number one, live in a world that it pushes almost busyness. Yeah. Like we're in this fast pace. Everything has to be quick. Mm -hmm. And so it's normal that it's often that I hear this with clients where they'll say, oh, but as soon as I lie down, it's like my mind won't stop. My Mm -hmm. mind is racing or these things are coming to my mind or Mm -hmm. all of a sudden this and this and that. And so part of it is 
we that our body is telling us we haven't given time to some things because mm -hmm. first things to, is pay attention if there's a theme mm -hmm. to the okay. thoughts right so if my thoughts are constantly about uh, let's say someone uh, struggling with their finances. So if, if my thoughts are constantly about finances, there's a theme to that. So that means there's something in this that's really doing something, right? Mm -hmm. Now we know that we can have anxiety, right? Mm -hmm. We know that that is very common. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but going deeper is first, what's the theme? Mm -hmm. So is there a theme to my thoughts? Mm -hmm. So you're going to ask yourself, is there a theme? Mm -hmm. right sometimes we don't know right away so i'll tell people have like a little journal next to your bed mm -hmm. and do a brain dump take mm -hmm. two minutes and literally dump everything there and see if the theme pops out mm -hmm. now those of us with adhd <laughs> we have like 30 themes <laughs> <laughs> right mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's different and we'll deal with them differently mm -hmm. right but in the <laughs> mm -hmm. what with you right i want you to notice if there's a theme mm -hmm. right and then what are my healthy coping skills too mm -hmm. right did I pray? Mm -hmm. You know, did I, you know, I know that faith is important for you. So I want you to be able to go, wait, did I pray? Did mm -hmm. I, have I laid some of this stuff to God mm -hmm. or am I trying to figure it out? Mm -hmm. Right. So what are my healthy coping skills at that moment that mm -hmm. I can utilize, especially since they're at night, right? So it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to run and go do, you know, 20 squats right <laughs> at that time and do some intense exercise. Mm -hmm. But this is a time where you might do some of those grounding things, mm -hmm. right? I can go to my calm place, mm -hmm. right? Tapping into my senses mm -hmm. and, and just going there and saying, okay, I can go to prayer. Mm -hmm. I can go to journaling. Yeah. So there's multiple healthy things that you can do when the brain wants to just kind of go on overdrive. Mm -hmm. But pay attention to the themes. Mm -hmm. What keeps reoccurring? Because mm -hmm. there is usually right there, that's the nugget. We've got to figure mm -hmm. something out there. That, that has helped me to figure out what my core belief is. Is like through certain situations, and I'm like, ooh, that happened there. That happened there. And I've already wrote notes for our next one. Mm. <laughs> but I'm like, can't wait. All these things <laughs> happened. And I was like, very triggered. <laughs> I was so triggered. I was right? just like, okay, that makes sense why this is happening. Right. Um, no, but that's something that I'm still working through to pause and not react. Yes. And th those are things it's like through my healing that it's like I have to give myself grace for and compassion because mm -hmm. I know that I'm not impulsive like I used to. I know I would be very like reactive or not say what I needed or like in certain situations when I would feel triggered. Mm -hmm. And now I handle it very differently. But it's not that it like goes away. Like you still have your struggles like we all do, you yeah. know, or like new situations come up that make you like okay, how do I handle this? You know, but those yeah. coping mechanisms of like brain dumps have helped me so much. Like at night when like I, if let's say my thoughts or something happen, like writing things out, putting it out um, have helped. Yeah. And um, right, and then like saying out loud what I'm feeling yeah. and then the opposite of that. Yeah. So it's like with the dating, right? It's like, you're like, oh my God, I'm going to be forever alone. Like that's like a thought, right? That can come in our head. And it's like, no, I know that my person's out there and I know I'll be in the right time and um, I am I am capable to find someone, you know, at, yeah. at that capacity. So it's like uh, saying the opposite or yeah. like when you're not feeling good with yourself, it's like I am like, I am 27 years old. I can defend myself. I, t I took a self-defense class. Hey, now. All right, don't come <laughs> at me. Don't come at Watch me. Watch out. <laughs> I know how to defend myself and no one can take advantage of me. Right. Like, no, like I, I am capable, you know, yeah. and, and able to take care of myself Absolutely. and I can say and voice what I want, you know, now, right. which is not the little girl that I didn't have a voice. And there she is. The little girl didn't have a voice. Mm -hmm. She didn't feel safe. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes it's that, that younger self, that inner child that's like wanting to rear. What does she do at those times? Mm -hmm. She would freeze or she would, yeah. now you don't, I don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. And you can tell her. We got this. Yeah. We can do this. I can speak up. Mm -hmm. I can voice what I need, mm -hmm. you know? And so, and it takes, it takes practice. Triggers are real. You know, I share that often that uh, I think people go, I want to go to therapy and I just want to be good. Like I never feel anything ever again. Like, mm -hmm. and no, we're human. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've, you know, started going to therapy at the age of 25 off and on. And I'm, <clears throat> 
43. <laughs> a young so, queen. <laughs> Gonna be 44 this year. No, and mm-hmm. and there are moments that mm-hmm. even now, just earlier in the year, I went back to, to mm-hmm. therapy because I was triggered. And not that something happened, but my response inside internally, mm-hmm. I knew I was triggered and I needed to deal with that and be proactive. Yeah. Right? So we're human. We go through yeah. it. Your therapists go through it too. Yes. You know? And so a uh, side note, get a therapist who goes to therapy. <laughs> like, that part. You that know? Part. You mm-hmm. need someone who's also mm-hmm. willing to walk out the work for themselves. So yeah. anyway, back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, though. Thank you for, for sharing that. We kind of got a session of yes. <laughs> like a real a little glimpse, all emotions <laughs> of stuff that we walk through. But, um, you know, I hope that you guys see that it's like it is a safe space to go. Yeah. But it's also things that I'm still walking through and I'm still journal- journaling in with it with Suali. Um, and I know that when it comes to to dating you are the one that will help me through that i'll be like so like this this happened listen <laughs> this i made so many mistakes right and and i have girlfriends <laughs> who are walking it out now and, and 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 you you know gosh i've made so many mistakes and so my hopes right i i tell people is you know thankfully i'm married to a great guy Hi, babe. (laughs) And so, and he is really had to walk through my healing journey. Mm -hmm. And that hasn't been easy, I'm sure, for him. Mm -hmm. But I've made so many mistakes because of my trauma, Mm -hmm. right? And so my hopes is that as women and men, but I work with a lot of women, Mm -hmm. um, that we're able to change the story, Mm -hmm. I don't have to be these labels. I don't have to be, trauma is not my identity. Mm. Trauma is what occurred to me, but mm. it's not my identity, mm. right? And so now in this season, we want you to walk in your true identity. Yeah. Who am I, mm. right? That's the question that we've been, who mm. am I? And so I want you to walk that out even more so. So those triggers are just showing us areas that in our identity that we're mm. still working through. Yeah, And that's what's important. Yeah, so good. So good. Thank you so much, Swelly, for being here. And thank you guys for tuning into this little session. Um, I hope that it encouraged you and it helped you to see that maybe you related to me and maybe you're like, oh my gosh, she's literally, that's me. So if that was you, just know that there's hope and there's people that want to walk with you through the journey. Um, And I'm here to talk about it because girl, I'm I'm in therapy. I will continue going. (laughs) And um, I know that the next few months, a lot of stuff more will come out. So, um, so yeah. So anything that you want to share before we wrap up? You did great today. Thank you. You were vulnerable. <laughs> no, no. Honestly, what you're doing and what you're sharing um, is going to help people. It, it's There's always that one person that will hear this and mm-hmm. they'll start their journey. So keep yeah. doing what you're doing. And I just want to encourage others to do the same. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's never too late. Yeah. You know, I went, my trauma work was in my early thirties and it wasn't pretty, mm-hmm. you know, but I'm not that same person. And mm-hmm. I'm so thankful that I'm not mm-hmm. because of it. I get to be a better therapist for you guys too. Mm-hmm. So you are an amazing therapist. Oh. Grateful for you. It's because of you guys. Yes. And God. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's Therapy, it. Jesus, and my coffee. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's that's, that's, it. Me that's all we need. <laughs> So where can people find you and also connect if they want to find a therapist? Yes. So you guys can find me. Um, my website is uh, inboomcounseling.org. And you guys can also find me on Instagram, which, yes, I keep I'm working on it, guys, uh, which is Bloom with Sue. Um, you can find me there um, or on Psychology Today. You can just look up my name, Sueli Rivera, and it will also uh, get you um, right to me as well. There's many resources and spaces for you to find some help that you need it. And like how we're talking today, this is very practical stuff. So it doesn't always mean that you went through some deep, right? Like big T trauma. Like it can Mm -hmm. be stuff that you're navigating, maybe through some challenges, maybe through some adjusting of life changes. Maybe you're just moved and relocated to a space and you're like, I don't have someone to talk to or um, family. There's so many things that you can talk to a therapist about and work through. And um, I'm just so grateful that I was able to start my journey in my 20s and 
navigate through a lot. And so I'm thankful for you guys for tuning in. Um, Make sure to share this with a friend, um, encourage someone else, and also make sure to subscribe to this podcast, leave a review. All of that helps to grow this podcast. And that would mean so much if you just go down to Apple Podcasts and leave five stars and just a few sweet words. And I would appreciate it so much. And I'm just thankful for you guys to show up every week. And if you also want to see the video podcast, you can go on YouTube at Beauty Marks Podcast on YouTube to check that out as well. So thank you guys so much. And thank you, Sawali. Thanks for having me. (laughs) I appreciate you so much. And I will see you guys next week.